Hey everyone, it's Christian McDonald back with another PF Sense update video for you. Before we jump into the topic of today's video, I wanted to first just drop a plug for the latest release of PF Sense Plus software version 2205, which is now available for upgrades. Uh, PF Sense Plus software version 2205 includes several significant enhancements, including OpenVPN data channel offload, ZFS boot environments, and the migration of Captive Portal from the IPFW packet filter to the PF packet filter. This update also includes a significant portfolio of bug fixes that are definitely worth jumping on. Uh, as always, I will leave links uh, to the NetGate blog article and upgrade guide in the video description. And if you haven't already seen my previous video where I talked about ZFS boot environments, I encourage you to check that one out as well after you finish watching this video. As always, I will leave a link to that video down below too. So if you haven't already, I really encourage you to uh, back up your config and uh, click that update button in the GUI and uh, let us know how your upgrade goes. And uh, we hope that uh, you find these new features uh, useful in your deployments and hopefully they, they make your life uh, a little better. So with that out of the way, let's start off with a little story. So a little over a month ago, a manager over at Tailscale reached out to the broader PFSense community via Twitter looking for a developer familiar with writing packages for PFSense. Now obviously anytime you tweet at PFSense or at NetGate USA, that's going to get our attention. And the timing of this tweet in particular was kind of funny because I had already been tapped internally here at NetGate to start exploring just what it would take to actually bring Tailscale to PFSense. So by the time this tweet went out, I actually already had a very basic proof of concept running on PFSense locally here in my lab. So this tweet was just more motivation to really get things going. So the ball was already in motion by the time this tweet was sent out. Um, I also stumbled onto a GitHub issue tracking the request for a PFSense package. So we have seen requests for tail scale on PFSense pop up from time to time on Reddit and also the NetGate forum. So we were aware that this capability is something that people want on PFSense. Well, today I am really pleased to announce that uh, yes, Jerry D, uh, we do have updates on the timeline for tail scale on PFSense. And I'm really excited to announce that Tailscale is running on PFSense, and we do plan on releasing a package here very soon for both PFSense Plus and PFSense Community Edition. So everybody gets the package, and uh, very soon you'll be able to run Tailscale on PFSense and have PFSense um, act as an exit node and act as a subnet router or just another machine in your tailnet. Uh, however you see fit. So this is the scenario that I'm going to be using to demonstrate tail scale on PFSense. Now, if you've seen my previous videos on site-to-site -site VPN with WireGuard on PFSense, this diagram probably looks a little familiar. However, there is a really important difference here in that with tail scale, there is no longer a requirement that either site A or site B or both have open ports on WAN. So in this case, both site A and site B could be anywhere in the world, could have any connection to the WAN, could be behind NAT, and the tail scale service is going to be responsible for actually rendezvousing and establishing those wire guard tunnels, figure, figuring out how to work around NAT, and barring all of that, if direct connection can't be established between site A and site B, tail scale can fall back to using relay nodes in the, in the cloud, very similar to how zero tier operates, and actually relay the, the traffic up to a relay node and then back down to another site. But tail scale tries really hard to accommodate different types of NAT and different scenarios. So the end goal should be that site A and site B um, should, should be talking directly. Um, with the help of this coordination service or server in the cloud, but these two devices should be able to communicate directly without having to relay their traffic up to some other fixed point and then back down. Um, they, sh they should be able to form a direct connection. 
um, albeit with the help of the coordination server. So this is one of the big selling points behind TailScale. Um, TailScale is a layer on top of WireGuard. Think of WireGuard as the data plane. It provides the very basic tools for encrypting and decrypting and transmitting traffic uh, using you know, the WireGuard specification. But what TailScale layers on top of that is things like um, single sign-on, IP address management, uh, automatic key rotation, um, access control, and there's a lot of other things that TailScale does. But think of it as WireGuard with special sauce kind of thrown on top that gives it a lot more flexibility and makes it easier to use um, and zero config. So again, site A, site B, they have no open ports on WAN. They can be anywhere in the world as long as they can reach the coordination server. Um, there should be a pretty good guarantee that as long as those things are true, that site A and site B will be able to communicate um, via layer three. Again, it's WireGuard and we'll be able to actually communicate from uh, site A to site B and site B to site A. So this is the scenario that we're gonna look at today in this demo. So let's go ahead and jump into site A. And because this is a VPN, you can find the tail scale package under VPN and tail scale. We're gonna go over all of the knobs that you can, that you can uh, adjust here, but let's start off with the authentication tab. So the authentication tab is where you can define the login server, which is also known as the control server. And you might also see it referred to as a coordination server if you're looking through TailScale documentation or hearing other people talk about TailScale. These are sort of all the same thing. This is that fixed point in the cloud that is the first point of contact from the clients to a fixed point in the cloud to get their instructions on you know, what tunnels to establish, what the other peers are doing, you know, exchanging keys, exchanging IP addresses and all that stuff. The coordination server is that first point of contact uh, from the actual nodes in the tailnet. Now, I've made this configurable because TailScale is not the only service that you can use. There's also an open source uh, re-implementation of the TailScale control server called HeadScale. And if you're using HeadScale to self-host this solution, uh, you'll just need to make sure that the HeadScale service is at a fixed point with a with a domain name and a cert uh, with and with a um, a TLS certificate, and you'll put the fully qualified domain name of the HeadScale server in place of controlplane.tailscale.com. This is the default because I assume that most people are going to probably use TailScale. So if you have if you're if you're not using HeadScale, you can just leave this as default, and you'll be using the uh, the TailScale service. The pre-authentication key is how you actually associate your PFSense uh, box with your account uh, on TailScale. So the pre-authentication key, you can generate these uh, from the TailScale admin console. So you'll log in, you'll go to settings. Under personal settings, you'll click on keys, and then you can click on generate off key. Now, you have a few options here. You'll want to ignore the machine settings like ephemeral. Uh, ephemeral keys are used if you are doing like CI, CD type deployments where you have uh, machines or nodes in your tail net that are only short lived. So they're created, they're spun up, they're used, and then they're destroyed. Ephemeral keys only last as long as the um, machine is online. So as soon as the machine goes offline, that key is no longer uh, valid. Reusable keys are a little bit dangerous considering that it's now a secret. So if you create a reusable key, this is a key that you can use to authenticate multiple devices. However, if that key is ever compromised, if you don't already have additional layers on top, either through access control or there's a, there's a knob that you can actually check to manually authorize new devices. Um, if somebody gets access to a reusable auth key, they can just add devices to your account because that's the whole point. It's a pre-auth key. You are pre-authorizing. This key is blessed with permission to associate machines to your tail scale account or your tail net. Um, so I'm recommending that you don't use reusable keys. Um, there's no reason really to use reusable keys. It takes you know 10 seconds to generate a key and to copy and paste it into PFSense. 
And now that key, even though it is stored in the config.xml, it's no longer really a secret because if that key was to be copied and pasted into another machine, it's, it's already consumed. So I recommend using non-reusable keys and also disable key expiry. So when you actually associate a machine, there's an option for disabling key expiration. So it typically would look like this, where you have, um, let's see, um, yeah, enable key expiry. So in this case, um, both site A and site B, the key will no longer expire. Um, if I enable this, then the key will expire and the, the, the rules for that are under settings and tailnet settings in general, and the default is 180 days. So if you don't change anything, you generate an auth key, you associate your machine to tail scale. If, the, if you don't do anything else, after 180 days, your PFSense nodes are just gonna drop off, which might not be what you intend. So my recommendation is to uh, use non-reusable keys and disable key expiry, um, you know, considering that you're probably gonna be using PFSense as a subnet router and or an exit node. Um, these are infrastructure machines that, you know, you probably want to uh, disable key expiry in that case. This logout and clean button is used if you want to disconnect the local machine from the login server, if it's connected, this will expire the current login and it will also flush the local state cache. So this is sort of like a power wash button. You click this, it will disconnect you from the tail net, it'll log you out, and it will flush the local state cache so that the next time you re-authenticate, it's as if this PFSense node has, has never seen tail scale before. So that's useful. Um, this is really just a front end to a back end routine that I wrote that needed to happen in order to change pre-auth pre -auth keys. There was some weird issue that I, that I hit with, with tail scale that probably should be addressed upstream, um, but changing the pre-auth key is a lot more reliable if you actually clear, clear that local state cache before you change the key. Um, anyway, that might not be the best way to do it. Again, this is still a work in progress. Um, but it works so far, so we're still refining that, but that's the way that it works. So again, you can generate pre-auth keys by going to your tail scale admin console or using head scale to generate these, and you just click on generate auth key and click generate key, and then you can copy that key, and then you can paste it here and uh, click save, and it will use that auth key to authenticate this node with tail scale. So I'm going to go ahead and not do that. I'm going to revoke it because I don't feel like doing any kind of post editing to blur that key out. It's dead and uh, we're, we're good to go. All right, so let's go to settings. So at the top we have simple enable disable. This is going to control whether or not tail scale is going to be started when PFSense boots. So in this case, uh, enable tail scale means that tail scale is going to start when PFSense starts. Um, the listen port, you probably don't need to change this unless you have a port conflict, um, but this is the port that uh, that tail scale is gonna use for WireGuard and peer-to-peer -peer traffic. And much like WireGuard, um, because tail scale tries to, it tries really hard to work around different types of NAT and especially not having to send traffic up to a relay if traffic is still local, um, you know, even on the same router, uh, TailScale listens on all interface addresses, much like WireGuard. So if you go and do like a SOC stat and look at the listening ports, um, you're gonna see 40, uh, 41641 being listened on all interfaces on, on um, on FreeBSD or PFSense in this case. So the next section is routing. The first option is to advertise as an exit node. So this offers this, when you check this, this offers to tail scale um, that this node be an exit node for outbound traffic. So this is if you're going to do uh, like full tunnel uh, VPN. So on the actual clients like iOS, Android, Windows, that sort of thing, if there is an exit node in your tailnet, 
you can actually choose that node to route all of your internet traffic through. So if I check this and click save, and I'll let this think, and I go back to tail scale and go to machines, you can see that site A has this exit node tag with a little note that says this machine is requesting to be used as an exit node. You can, re you can review this. So when you check that box in PFSense, it just advertises that it can be an exit node, but you then have to go into tail scale um, or head scale and actually bless that machine to be an exit node. In this case, I can just go in to edit route settings and click on use as exit node. Now, if I go to the iOS app and go through the prompts there, I can choose site A to be an exit node. And if I was on my phone, then all of my, tra all of my internet traffic would be sent through site A. And it would appear as if I am originating from site A. Um, in this case, I'm not going to use an exit node. That's not really part of the demo here today. Um, so I'm just going to turn that off and uncheck advertise exit node. And we'll go back here, and that should drop off. OK, yep, and there we go. So site A is no longer an exit node. All right, <clears throat> the next setting is to accept subnet routes. So this is going to tell the local TailScale service whether or not to accept subnet routes that are being advertised by other nodes in the tail net and whether or not to insert those into the host routing table. So if I go to, um, let's look at, so site B, we already talked about the network uh, diagram here. Remember site B has a 192.168.101.0 slash 24 network. And under settings here, we're advertising this network into the tail net. If I go back to site A and I go to routes, you're gonna see that there is going to be a route uh, for 192.168.101.0 slash 24 via the tail scale interface. So that particular checkbox is controlling whether or not that route gets inserted into the host routing table um, in PFSense and FreeBSD. So if I go back to VPN tail scale settings and I uncheck that and click on save and go back to status and route or diagnostic and routes you can see that the route to the 192.168.101.0 slash 24 network is now not in the routing table so that checkbox controls whether or not routes that are being advertised into the tailnet are being actually accepted and inserted into this particular host's routing table so I do want that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Accept Subnet Route and click on Save. And let it think for a second. And now if I go back to Status, or sorry, Diagnostics and Routes and go back, you can see that it picked up that route from the tail net and it inserted it into the host routing table. And I should be able to talk to Site B again now that I have a route. Yep. OK. So. That is pretty much the setup in regards to the tail scale package itself. Um, just a few more things, though. We do have a, a very basic status page. Uh, this right now is just returning the output of the tail scale CLI commands. So tail scale IP shows you your tail scale address, both your v4 and your v6 address. It shows you the output of tail scale net check which will tell you um, what the latency is to the relays, uh, what the nearest relay is, um, and some other useful information if you're trying to debug a connection issue. And then it also shows you the output of tail scale status, which just shows you a list of the peers in your tail net, their host names, the, the account that, is that was uh, associated with that device, the operating system, and then the last column is the uh, is some information about whether or not the device is active, what type of connection, if it's direct or through a relay, and also transmit and receive packets. Besides that, there's only a few other things that you actually need to uh, configure in order to make this work. Um, there is a tail scale interface group that's created um, when you install the package, very similar to WireGuard. Um, unlike WireGuard, though, where you have multiple WireGuard tunnel interfaces that can get grouped together, 
Um, there's no need to actually assign tail scale zero as a PFSense interface. You can just leave that and, uh, and address it via the interface group. So you can just leave, you can just ignore tail scale zero, don't assign it to a PFSense interface because then PFSense is going to uh, own the interface and try to, you know, uh, configure addresses which you don't want you want to let tail scale do that so leave that alone and just use the interface group called tail scale that's created when you install the package and you can find that when you go to firewall and rules and tail scale you can create firewall rules there now there is one really important thing that you have to be aware of when creating firewall rules under the tail scale interface group and that is this interface group is only going to be able to see traffic that is actually destined for the local tail scale zero interface. So this interface group, you're not going to be able to filter or see cross site traffic. Um, the way that you would filter that kind of traffic is using the tail scale um, ACL. Uh, rules engine. You can find that under tail scale access controls. This is not going to be a tutorial on how to define um, access controls in, in, in tail scale. It's a JSON based syntax um, that's pretty straightforward. You can find links um, in the tail scale documentation for constructing these rules. But basically when traffic actually makes it onto the host networking stack in FreeBSD and by extension PFSense, because of the way that tail scale is implemented, that traffic already appears to be originating from the local machine. So this interface group is only going to be able to see traffic that was originally destined for the tail scale interface itself. There's actually a really good technical overview of this behavior that tail scale has written up in their knowledge base. If you go to tail scale, click on docs and type in uh, kernel. I think that'll get you there. Yep, uh, kernel versus net stack, subnet routing and exit nodes. So this article talks about a difference between how tail scale behaves when running as root on Linux versus all of the other platforms. When talking about FreeBSD, what ends up happening is the tail scale service that runs on PFSense actually terminates TCP and UDP connections and then creates new outbound connections towards whatever target uh, from the subnet router to the target on the connected subnet and then stitches those connections back sort of as a proxy um, between the tail scale network and the, uh, the physical subnet, uh, whatever subnet we're, we're routing towards. Now this has some very important drawbacks and caveats that need to be mentioned. First of all, it adds another layer of user space processing that further uh, impacts performance. So one of the important things to consider is that tail scale, although it uses WireGuard, the way that tail scale is currently implemented, even on Linux, is that it does not use kernel provided WireGuard. Um, the same story is true on FreeBSD, although we know that uh, FreeBSD does have a kernel mode uh, WireGuard implementation that NetGate originally sponsored. Um, you can check out my previous videos if you're interested to hear and learn more, more about the WireGuard package, which does use the WireGuard kernel resident uh, implementation. TailScale uses WireGuard Go, which is a user space implementation of WireGuard, and uses uh, uh, kernel services like the uh, TunTap driver for providing a tunnel interface into the kernel and then shuff shuffling that data up to user space for processing and then data back down um, to the actual interface. But in user space mode in FreeBSD, not only do we have the data plane in user space, but we also have the network routing stack in user space as well, which means not only do we have the overhead of running WireGuard in user space, we also have the overhead of running the routing stack in user space as well. So this is um, not as optimized as what you would find on, you know, on the Linux kernel if you're running tail scale as root on Linux, but that's what we have so far on tail scale. Um, I'm currently looking into, you know, what it would take to improve this. I'm still, you know, not only learning Golang, but also the tail scale code base as well. Um, but there shouldn't be any reason why that shouldn't be possible. I just need someone, and just, it just needs some time and some TLC to make happen. 
Um, but there's a really good summary chart on this knowledge base article, which I will link in the video description, talks about the differences between kernel mode, tail scale, in terms of routing. They both still use WireGuard Go, um, so that is important to understand. We're strictly talking about the routing stack, not the, um, not the data plane. Um, so both still use WireGuard Go, but the difference here is what is handling the routing when you're running root on Linux, it's the kernel. When you're running on every other platform, it's, uh, it's, it's a user space networking stack known as GVisor NetStack. Um, so the, the two big Im limitations here, number one is it's, 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 it leaves a lot of performance on the table. And number two, not all transport protocols are supported. Um, so only TCP, only UDP traffic is supported. ICMP only also only works, uh, only pings work. So there's also some hackery to make, uh, to make ping traffic specifically work since ICMP is not TCP or UDP. There's another hack involved in order to make uh, ICMP work. Only pings, that's an important thing to consider. And the reason why they did that is because people expect to use ICMP for connectivity testing. That does add a small amount of latency, which is discussed here in this article. Again, if you want to read more about this, you can, I'll, again, leave a link in the video description to that. Um, but that's an important thing to consider because when traffic actually is, you know, is visible to PF, it already appears to be local. So as an example to that, I'm actually coming in on site A. So if I go to the dashboard on site A, you can see that my address is 172.2160.100. But if I go to site B, um, you will see that the address that PF, uh, PF Sense is telling me that I'm coming from, that I'm originating from, is 192.168.101.1, which is the LAN address of site B. But obviously that's not true. So there's some trickery going on there internal to tail scale. And what that means is by the time that traffic you know, pops out, into the host networking stack in PFSense, it looks as though it's originating from site B's uh, PFSense box itself. So there's no you know, straightforward way of filtering that and differentiating it between other traffic that might be coming from PFSense towards the, the, the LAN on site B. So again, if you need to filter that kind of traffic, right now the way that you would do it is using ACLs uh, in tail scale or head scale in order to make that work. The one last thing that we need to do is, in order to further work around this user space networking stack caveat, is we need to uh, add a NAT rule. Um, so on site B, if we go to NAT and go to outbound, um, you can see that I've created some, uh, some manual mappings here. So I have hybrid outbound NAT rule generation enabled. Um, in this case, I have two. I have two different LANs here that I want to actually allow connectivity to. And I need to actually translate the source addresses of those. So anything that's being sourced from 192.168.1.0 slash 24 or this 172.2160.0 slash 24 network, any, any traffic being sourced from either of those networks, when it uh, leaves you know, towards tail scale, um, it's going to have its source address translated to be the tail scale address, which the tail scale address is going to be this address that's assigned by TailScale itself. Uh, if we go to site B, the same story there, but in the, in the opposite direction, anything from 192.168.101.0 slash 24 is gonna get translated using the TailScale address. When you make this happen, uh, traffic works. And uh, I, can, I can plug into site B, access site A. I can plug into site A, access site B. Again, with some caveats to performance um, currently, but it works. So that is what we have so far with uh, TailScale. So again, we're going to be making this package available both to PFSense Plus customers as well as those of you using PFSense Community Edition. Hopefully, we'll have a package available uh, this week. That's my goal within the next few days. So yeah, that's pretty much all I've got for you guys today. Um, let me know what you think in the comments section down below. I would appreciate a thumbs up uh, if you like this video. If you're not already subscribed, um, I encourage you that if uh, PFSense and networking, VPNs are, are, are your thing and you like to listen to a talking head, I would appreciate a subscription. I'm not in it for the subscriptions, but um, I, I reached over 3,000 subscribers uh, within the last two weeks, and I am absolutely blown away that there are 3,000 people that um, care to hear, hear what I have to say. So thank you very much for subscribing. If you have subscribed, if you haven't already, 
Um, maybe this video has earned your subscription. If, if not, that's okay too. So with that being said, Tailscale is running on PFSense. Uh, we'll make an announcement uh, when the package is actually released. We're gonna work on a blog a article that will be, uh, be posted on the NetGate blog um, here very soon. We'll make announcements on Reddit as well when the package is available. And I'll also uh, throw a, a post on YouTube um, letting everybody know that the package is ready for download as well. So take a, a look for that in the package manager. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.